A heavy load transport for the world of tomorrow. A 320 ton magnet for the world's largest nuclear fusion reactor. A single movement steers every wheel simultaneously. Too much movement changes the direction of the entire trailer. Over 100 kilometers through the south of France with a cargo worth millions. It's very fragile and must not be damaged. Otherwise, the custom-made product will be useless. The Belle Etat municipality in southern France. The cargo has just arrived from Italy by sea. From here, the mega transport begins its journey inland. The cargo, a 320 ton magnet, plus an 80 ton transport frame, 17.7 meters long, 3.6 meters high, and 9.2 meters wide. And these are the men having to manage the transport, Julian Kemissi and David Gazena. David Gazena is supervising the main logistics company. He has been in charge of transportation for the ITER site since 2017. We've already transported similar components. Well, it is not every day that they are 10 or 11 meters wide. This one weighs 400 tons. In total, we're moving over 600 tons. It's amazing to be able to transport components like this because there aren't many projects like it. Also, ITER is a great project, a concept for future generations. We are very proud to be part of it. The magnet has a vital task. The nuclear fusion reactor generates electricity from super hot plasma. To keep the plasma in position requires a strong magnetic field. This is the route the team has ahead of them. In four legs, over four nights, the team has to complete 103 kilometers. Destination, ITER. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor is expected to become the largest nuclear fusion reactor in the world. It will weigh an incredible 23,000 tons. On the 180 hectare site, 5,000 scientists and personnel are working on the electricity of the future. Construction began in 2010. The first plasma is expected to flow in 2025. The vision, bringing the power of the sun to Earth. High gravitational forces on the sun cause hydrogen atoms to fuse. This releases energy as light and heat. This is fusion. And this is precisely what is to happen here in the south of France. Working to make it happen are people like Boris Belizia. He manages and supervises all components from Europe and is aware of the magnitude of the project. I have mixed feelings about this project. On the one hand, it can change the future for humanity. It will change the world's geopolitical landscape. We will no longer be dependent on oil production and where oil comes from. We will be able to generate clean energy from water. It's incredible. On the other hand, I'm also apprehensive because what we are making is the first of its kind, the first ever made. Eighteen of these so-called toroidal field magnets are to generate a magnetic field. Within this magnetic field, the hydrogen atoms fuse to form superhot plasma.
The magnet is made of a superconductor, a three-tin superconductor. It is extremely fragile and must not be damaged. In other words, any changes must be minimal, around 0.1% maximum. This means inspections needed to be carried out continuously during production. This is relatively simple because the component is located in a factory. But extra special care is going to be needed during the transport. Two impact indicators have therefore been mounted on the transport frame. The white liquid turns red when subjected to excessive impact or vibration. Two sensors are also located inside the packaging. These measure humidity and temperature. We are talking about high-tech here. And it must be delivered in perfect condition. So we have to be extremely careful when transporting it. This means we use engineers working in the back office to give us guidance on speed and the position of the load on the transporter along the route. The transport is taking place using an SPMT, a self-propelled modular transporter. It has 18 axles and 288 wheels. The SPMT's front and rear sections can be steered independently of each other. To get the cargo moving, there are two power packs, each with 310 horsepower in addition to the two trucks. The 600 horsepower trucks at the front and rear steer the SPMT. When things get tricky, the SPMT can be steered by remote control. The person doing this job sits in the front truck. Dexterity is required from the trailer operator. They are, after all, steering 400 tons of cargo. Julien Kemissi is responsible for things along the route. He and his team of 11 have been maneuvering convoys to the ITER construction site since 2015. Transports like this requires being prepared for new challenges. Every component is different, every configuration, every climate, every trailer, even every driver. So every time you do these transport tasks, you take on a new challenge. The convoy is 10 meters wide overall, 6.2 meters high, and 51 meters long. Trucks and cargo together weigh 635 tons. It is the weight of the load that makes the transport difficult. This becomes apparent on the first leg of the journey. The easiest way would be over a bridge, but it has a 150-ton weight limit. The only option, to detour across the freeway. But the start and end points of the crossing are not directly opposite. The mega transport will have to snake its way across the freeway. 8 p.m. The crossing starts in one and a half hours. 60-plus police officers are on duty tonight. Before every start, the staff go through a checklist. The whole journey is meticulously planned. Supervisor David Gazina briefs the team leaders about the crossing. Times, road closures, and speed. The transport must be at the freeway by 12.50 a.m. We plan it down to the minute. The drivers get out and discuss the route before setting off. We have 10 minutes to cross the freeway. We aim to be off the freeway before daybreak. It's a public road, after all. We don't want to cause any inconvenience. At 9.30 p.m. sharp, it starts. Maneuvering the trailer requires considerable skill and caution using the remote control. A single movement steers every wheel simultaneously. Too much movement changes the direction of the entire trailer. Just a few centimeters can have a huge impact on a transporter of this length. The 635-ton transport slowly picks up speed. 
Assisting this mega transport tonight are nearly 100 people in over 40 vehicles. The destination tonight is three and a half hours away. Maximum concentration from the team is required to get there. While police divert the traffic, the assembly crew clears the way. The individual teams work together like clockwork. Preparations have been excellent. We've been planning convoys like this for years. We've already done seven transports of this kind, and each time we get better and better. The teams practice, also during the daytime. They walk the roads and check the routes. We really want it to be perfect. And no room for obstacles. Trees have been felled, electricity pylons moved, bridges built and detours put in place to get us to the Eater site. A huge effort but it's worthwhile for the many transports to be made. The cargo components are unique, specially built for the ITER project, and thus far too important to take any risks. The most tense moment is finally arriving at the destination. Preparation is key. I like the moment when it starts, when the transport begins to roll, but I also like the moment when we're feeling most proud, when we finally reach the destination. But to achieve that, the team has to initially clear the first hurdle. It's 12.45 a.m the transport arrives at the freeway. The easiest way would be over the bridge. The load is way too heavy, so we'll have to go straight across the lanes of the freeway. The team has just 10 minutes to do this. Traffic is still flowing along the freeway. Before starting, the SPMT steering requires changing. From here, the back end will be steered manually. What counts now is the careful judgment of Hila Bumzur. The clock starts running. In 10 minutes, the freeway is to be reopened. Under the watchful gaze of Jonathan Cousa and Jean-Baptiste Labelle, the mega transport starts to move. The team slowly guides the 51 meter long and 10 meter wide vehicle through the narrow opening. The changeover has made the SPMT more agile, but manual steering brings with it a high level of risk. Because one movement steers every wheel simultaneously, a sudden move might jerk the entire trailer in the wrong direction. transport moves agonizingly slowly along the freeway. Ten minutes later, the team has made it. The last actions are taken and the freeway is reopened. At 1 a.m. sharp, the convoy arrives at the park up for today's leg of the journey. Last but not least, the team ensures the load and the trailer are level. 
At 400 tons, the weight must be evenly distributed over the entire load-bearing surface. If not, the pressure on the road will increase in one place and damage will occur. Tomorrow is another day, another night. The route will be a little different. We will pass through a town and there will be more people around watching the convoy. We will need to be careful. And we will do our very best again tomorrow. We will resume in 19 hours with the second leg. The teams first need to get a good night's sleep. While the men are resting, the ITER construction site is busy working. In just under 15 years of construction, 75% of the reactor has now been completed. Over 5,000 scientists and personnel from around the world are involved in the large-scale project. 35 nations are participating and paying 20 billion euros to bring the power of the sun to Earth. To do this, the reactor heats hydrogen atoms to at least 150 million degrees Celsius. But you can't do this without the magnets. It is their power that causes the atoms to fuse, which results in a gas called plasma. The magnets also hold the plasma in position and away from the walls. This is the Tokamak nuclear fusion reactor. Nuclear fusion works like a thermal power plant. Heat is converted into electricity. This energy source is inexhaustible produces no CO2 and has no long-term radioactive waste. The project in the south of France aims to show that fusion plasma generates 10 times more output than input. The target for the first trial run is 500 megawatts. The idea is not new. Scientists around the world began researching fusion energy in the 1920s. In 1950, the tokamak process was developed in the Soviet Union. But so far, input has been higher than output. If the trial succeeds in 2025, it would be a turning point, a revolution. But for this to happen, each component needs to get there safely. The second leg is the longest of the four legs in the journey. By 3 a.m., the team has to cover a distance of 29 kilometers. The greatest challenge? a 90-degree left turn. For the 51-meter convoy, the turn cannot be done in a single maneuver. To manage it, the team needs to be clever. But first, Lombesque, the largest town on the route, needs to be crossed. We've been told by the police that there are lots of spectators along the route tonight. There is a risk of vehicles blocking the road. We may have to stop and remove vehicles before we can continue. Although the ITER administrative department gives out information about the transports, the team still assumes that there will be many people parking illegally. At 9.30 p.m., the mega transport starts moving. Shortly after the start, the team faces its first challenge of the night. The road has a 4% incline. Doesn't sound like much, but it's huge for a 400-ton load. Without an extra tractor unit, there is no way to manage it. With an additional 600 horsepower, the journey continues slowly onwards.
But horsepower isn't everything. At the next narrow point, the judgment of the two trailer operators, Jonathan Cousin and Jean-Baptiste Labelle, is called upon. There will always be something unexpected that happens during a transport. Things never go perfectly. But our motto is getting better with every transport. There's always something that could be done better. Nothing happens automatically. As yet, we've not developed a routine, but it shouldn't become routine. The aim is to get better. Sometimes there are minor issues, but then that's what we're here for, to fix them. On est là pour les pour les arranger. It's 10:40 p.m. The convoy is approaching Lombesque. The team has enough space here to prepare for the 90-degree left turn. We have arrived in the town of Lombesque. This is where we rotate. We uncouple the tractor units, change them around, and then continue. It's going to be pretty tight. The drivers have to be really careful. Straight ahead, the 90-degree left turn awaits. But the mega transport first continues around the traffic circle. This is where we rotate the trucks. The truck that has just been pulling becomes the one behind and pushes. The truck that has been pushing takes over at the head of the convoy. The experienced team rearranges the convoy within minutes. But then there is a problem. The wheels of the tractor unit spin. With its 320 tons, the magnet weighs as much as a loaded Boeing 747-300. Two power packs each with 310 horsepower and two trucks each with 600 horsepower. A total of 1,820 horsepower strain against the weight. But it's futile. Trailer operator Hilab Omzur gets out to look for the problem. According to the calculations, the horsepower should easily be enough. The convoy then starts moving again. But then stops. The trucks are unable to move the load. On the contrary, the transport slowly rolls backwards, pushing the rear truck aside like a toy. The drivers slowly regain control of the convoy. It turns out to have been a simple mistake that can happen even to the best. It was nothing serious. The first truck wanted to move off, but forgot that the trailer still had its brakes on. That's essentially why the wheels were spinning. It was like trying to drive a car with the handbrake on. So, all in all, no big deal, just a breakdown in communications. There's no time for the team to relax. 
just ahead is the 90 degree left turn. The solution? The convoy stops and the trucks return to their original positions. The rear truck goes to the front and the front goes to the rear. The team also hooks up an extra tractor unit. The next traffic circle reveals how important the components are for ITER. Wherever possible, the route has been leveled, like at the center of the traffic circle. By 2025, 250 heavy transports will have taken this route, making even costly road modifications worthwhile. By 3 a.m., leg two has been completed. Supervisor David Gazena is pleased with his team's performance. It's been a long night, and now it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Everything worked out perfectly. The drivers did a great job. Some of the sections along the route were difficult. We had to uncouple and rotate the trucks several times. I bet the team is pretty tired. We're about halfway there. We'll be back and ready tomorrow. The third leg of the mega transport is the longest. 32 kilometers. The team will start in 17 hours. 69 kilometers away, construction work is in full swing. One man is responsible for the 18 toroidal field magnets, Sebastian Kosorowski. As soon as the transport gets here, we unpack the component. We take over responsibility for the component from the manufacturers and fully check everything. We carry out electrical tests, vacuum tests, and detailed measurements. And once we are done, several assembly tasks are required to prepare the component for its later use. Pour les activités ultérieures d'assemblage du tokamak. The component in its final form would be too large and fragile to be transported. So the final work is done here in the assembly hall. Two toroidal field magnets are joined together. Only then can Sebastian Kosorowski and his team insert the component into the reactor. For the Tokamak reactor to start at all, one million components and around 10 million individual parts are needed. The reactor is a magnetic cage. On the outside are six poloidal magnets. The heart is a superconducting magnet consisting of six modules. It is 18 meters high and four and a half meters thick. There are then 18 toroidal magnets. At 9.2 by 17.7 .7 meters, they are the largest components. They are positioned around the vacuum chamber in which the plasma flows. It is to be ready by 2025. As the sun's gravity is much greater than the Earth's, the hydrogen atoms need to get much hotter for them to fuse, 10 times hotter than on the sun. This means that 150 to 300 million degrees Celsius will be reached inside the reactor. The construction work is on schedule. 
but only because everything has been planned down to the smallest detail. Since I've been here, there have been only two unfortunate instances with the components. In the one case, cargo was lost at sea during transport and had to be manufactured again. Fortunately, we got a replacement before installation began. And the second incident involved a component from Europe which was also to be transported by ship. As the cargo was being loaded onto the ship, it collided into the ship's side. We then needed to test the component to ensure that it was still intact. We tested everything and that actually took us several weeks. One missing component can set the project back by years. Making a toroidal field magnet takes up to five and a half years. The third leg, at 32 kilometers, is the longest leg of the mega transport. The team must again cross a freeway. At 9.30 p.m., the convoy starts. The convoy has a clear structure. Motorized police officers and the assembly team prepare the way ahead. At the head of the convoy is Supervisor David Gazena. The goal is to get the component to the leg's destination without any problems or delays. This software helps us to know what to look out for en route and what obstacles there are. I can see the locations or places where we are permitted to move at a specific speed. The drivers also receive this information so they know when, where and how to maneuver the transporter. Whether the magnet has survived the transport will only become clear at its destination. Four sensors on the load permanently measure bumps and vibrations. This data is checked after arrival. It will then be clear whether David Gazena's team has done everything right. Driving directly behind the magnet are operator assistants Jonathan Coussa and Jean-Baptiste Labelle. If it gets too tight, they act as eyes for the drivers, all under the watchful gaze of Julien Kimissi. For this transport, we are using two communication systems. The first gives us info on the route, for example, what obstacles there are along the way. The second is used to communicate with the team. We can use it to inform each other on how far we are from each other and if there are any problems. Julien Kimissi and his team of 11 work like clockwork, each with precise tasks. I've positioned myself here to oversee the transport. I like the overview to see the transport and the team. We're managing the convoy from two sides. This way we can then avoid obstacles on the route, and I can react if we encounter difficulties and things don't go according to plan. This is possible because of where I am positioned. I don't need to be further ahead of the convoy. From here, I can see every aspect of the transport. At 11.40 p.m., the convoy reaches the freeway. And the team also overcomes this obstacle without any problems. At 1.15 a.m., this leg of the journey is completed. The third night went well. We had no problems. 
Um, the team worked great together and the journey was a success. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Only 20 kilometers to the finish. The final leg is the most challenging. A 9% incline awaits the team. And this rock face. The cargo is 10 meters wide. The roadway is only wider by a few centimeters and is twisty. Half an hour prior to departure, the team meets for the final time. 83 of 103 kilometers have been completed, so far without incident. But the three night shifts have demanded energy. This is the last night and we can see the end of the journey. We're happy, it's gone well so far, but we have to remain alert because the final night is quite complicated. The operators and drivers have been getting increasingly tired over the past few days. It's 10 p.m. The convoy departs on its final leg to the ITER construction site. The ITER project is a generational project. Every single component is crucial for the schedule. The transport route has been planned down to the last meter. The next bridge can bear only 120 tons, but the transporter and trucks weigh 635 tons. The team moves to a specially built road with a gate. The team carefully maneuvers the transporter across the closed freeway. Operator assistants Jonathan Coussard and Jean-Baptiste Labelle don't have time for a breather. Next up is passing the rock face. The section past the rock face is only 450 meters long, but there is a constant threat of falling rocks from above. The rock face is passed meter by meter. After an intense 15 minutes, the team has made it. But ahead of them is still 10 kilometers with a gradient of up to 9%. We mainly need to stick to the certain schedules, and we also need to stick to the route sections that we have planned for the transport. But I would say that the most important thing, of course, is that the cargo arrives absolutely intact. The team will know this tomorrow when the data from the sensors has been analyzed. The sensors are located on the cargo and measure every bump and vibration. But the team now has to overcome the final obstacle, the 9% slope. The team rotates the trucks and switches the convoy's direction of travel. The two trucks each have 600 horsepower, and the two power packs each have 310 horsepower. It's not enough. The team attaches the extra tractor unit.
2,020 horsepower pull the 400 tons of cargo up the incline. The last obstacle has now been overcome. The team rotates the trucks one last time and returns the convoy to its original order. Within 20 minutes, the transporter is ready to roll again. I am very proud of my team. Everyone is doing a great job and everyone knows exactly what they have to do and it's absolutely essential for such transports. When an obstacle arises, everyone needs to work as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's vital that everyone does their part to ensure that everything runs smoothly. The magnet has come a long way, over 500 kilometers, from Italy across the sea to the coast of southern France, and from there, to here in four nights, to the largest construction site in the world. This mega transport required almost 100 people to be up every night. We have arrived at our destination, at ITER. There have been no problems at all. Thank you, team. And to those back in the office, working for years on planning the route and supporting us in everything. The team checks the load one last time. There is joy in the men's faces. We'll celebrate this. It's our passion. I think we worked really, really well together. The route was actually at times complicated and pretty difficult. But we're a super great team that works fantastically together. I hope we'll do some great things, even greater things than this mission. When there's a problem, we work together. We listen to each other and we move forward together. The job is not yet done. Tomorrow, the team will unload the magnet. And the data from the sensors will be checked. Under the watchful eyes of Boris Balizia and Sebastian Kozorowski. The magnet is a key component in the nuclear fusion reactor. If everything works out well, the electricity of the future will be born here. If everything works out well. Because the SPMT suddenly refuses to move along the final few meters. Things get tense for the team, and that after four night shifts in a row. Oh. None of the team knows what the problem is. We're just a few meters away from the unloading point, and now there's one final small problem. The steering controller is having trouble with the radio levels. We'll see if we can fix it, or if we need to move the SPMT in the conventional way, using the trucks. Maneuvering with trucks will be far more difficult, but fortunately, the team manages to repair the controller. The team needs to unload the magnet together with its transport frame. Agonizingly slowly, 
they maneuver the load onto the uprights. With 400 tons, they cannot be reckless. The weight must be evenly distributed. It is a relief to see that the component has arrived without any problems after such a long journey. We're very happy. We are proud, but now we take over responsibility. From now on, we are responsible for the component and for everything that happens to it. The 400-ton cargo has been delivered. The team has done its job, and the next mega transport is already waiting for them. But the four sensors report is now critical. They have been monitoring the transport from the very beginning. They are now downloading the transport data. The data informs us whether the cargo has been damaged or shaken during transportation. Accelerations in speed are also reported. Humidity and temperatures, too. Moisture poses a rusting risk. If the limit value is exceeded, a complex cleaning process will be needed the final deliverance. Open the document. <laughs> the magnet's journey is not over yet. It will now go into the assembly hall. It will be worked on further before being installed in the nuclear fusion reactor. Today's delivery was very important. It's the year's end for European manufacturers. We now enter a new phase that will take more than four years to assemble all TF magnets to complete the assembly phases. In 2025, the nuclear fusion reactor is to be ready and the first plasma flowing. It could mark the beginning of a new age of electricity. <laughs>